someone just confirmed that we have time, like someone's able to advance the slides. And I you're on mute. I can do it, Gio. Okay, all right then. I'm going to move my script over here so it's right in front. Hello and welcome to the 2021 Annual General Meeting of the Canadian Association of Occupational Therapists. My name is Giovanna Boniface and I'm the president of CAOT. Bonjour et bienvenue à l'Assemblée Générale Annuelle 2021 de l'Association Canadienne des Algothérapeutes. Je m'appelle Giovanna Bonavis, Présidente de l'ASAE. Before we begin, I would like to start with a land acknowledgement. We do this to remind ourselves of our colonial history and acknowledge the land where each of us engages in our daily lives, as well as the Indigenous peoples and ancestors who are and have been caretakers of that land for millennia. Land acknowledgements are an important first step towards honoring the original occupants of a place, and I encourage you to reflect and develop your own land acknowledgement statement if you have not already done so. It is an important step to build understanding in our history. I also acknowledge that a singular land acknowledgement does not capture the full breadth of individuals who are attending this meeting today in this virtual platform. As the CAT office and staff are primarily based in Ottawa, we acknowledge the traditional unceded, unsurrendered territory of the Algonquin Anishinaabeg people. The Algonquin peoples have lived on and taken care of this land for thousands of years. CAOT further acknowledges the historic oppression of lands, cultures, and the original peoples in what we know now as Canada, and strongly believes that the practice of occupational therapy can and will contribute to the healing and decolonizing journey we all share together. We are grateful to have the opportunity to be present in this territory. I'm joining today from North Vancouver on the traditional ancestral and unceded territory of the people of the inlet, the tsleil Nation, a nation that has been caring for this traditional territory for thousands of years. Let us take a short pause so everyone can reflect on their own acknowledgement and relationship to the land and be grateful for the diverse Indigenous peoples and ancestors that have taken care of that land for centuries. Please feel free to share your acknowledgement in the chat box during this pause. I also want to thank each of you for taking the time to join us today. We know that life and schedules are busier than ever, and we are grateful that you chose to make time to participate. Bonjour à tous. It is really and truly wonderful that you've made the time to join us for this meeting, an important member touch point. I was looking at the registration list and thinking it would be so fantastic to be together in one room. Thank you for being here. There isn't a health expert, a map, or a crystal ball that could have predicted the sort of year that we, we have all had. No matter where you looked, there wasn't a known path forward. However, here we are in wave three uh, with the vaccination race underway. Our coping mechanism has been tested to their limits and our pivoting skills both discovered and honed. Yet occupational therapists and occupational therapist assistant remain resilient. What a great profession. I am incredibly proud to be leading this organization, even more so under such demanding circumstances when action carry urgency and progress faces detours. Yes, my thanks to each and every one of you as well as professionals and as people. And thank you, Hélène, for managing to forge ahead, remaining strategic and staying positive in spite of all that you've had to face and juggle in the past year. You and the, C you and the entire CAOT team deserve both accolades and trust that you're able to make time for yourselves to rest and recharge. So now to the business of the day. This is a meeting for our members to review the association's performance from October 1st, 2019 to September 30, 2020. 
We will also celebrate the contributions of some of our exceptional colleagues as we will announce the 2021 CAOT award recipients, including the Muriel Driver Memorial Lectureship Award. The President's and CEO's report will highlight association activities in the first six months of this fiscal year. And as well, time is allocated for members to ask questions and offer feedback on COT priorities and operations. Our bylaws require that we have 50 members present to attain quorum. Given we do not have in-person hosted sites as per previous years, we may have a mix of individuals who have logged in from their personal computers or devices, as well as some that are sharing a workspace computer. Selon nos statuts, 50 membres doivent être présents pour atteindre le quorum. Plusieurs membres sont déjà inscrits et se sont connectés à leur poste de travail personnel. Nous avons déjà noté votre présence et nous, nous vous remercions d'avoir pris le temps de participer à notre Assemblée générale annuelle en ces temps. What we need is an accurate count of everyone on the call. If you are participating individually, we have already captured your attendance. If, however, you are participating at a site where there is more than one member, we'd like you to provide the final number of members in attendance. In the chat box, please type your name and the total number of members with you today, including yourself. So while we verify that count, I'd like to recognize our current board of directors. They work hard on behalf of members to ensure CAOT makes progress on our mission to advance excellence in occupational therapy in Canada. Myself as president, Christine Fleming, vice chair, Margaret Collingwood, treasurer, Lisa Diamond Burchak, secretary, Caitlin DeWurst, Northwest Territories, Nunavut and Yukon director, Donna Drynan, British Columbia director, Shanif Esmail, Alberta director, Suzanne Lenvoy, Saskatchewan director, Brenda Semenko, Manitoba director, Karen Ribeiro Gould, Ontario director, Nathalie Villette, Representante au Conseil d'Administration pour le Québec, Claudia Martin, New Brunswick Director, Karen Judry, Nova Scotia Director, Yvonne Thompson, Prince Edward Island Director, Sarah Burt, Newfoundland and Labrador Director, Dirk Silversides, External Director, and Paulette Guitard, the newly appointed Interim WFOT Director. We would also like to take this opportunity to congratulate Andrew Freeman as past WFOT director on the board, who has been elected to the position of WFOT program coordinator, practice development. We also have a number of staff members on the call, mostly particip participating from home, although Ellen and Megan are in our Ottawa National Office to oversee the technical platform. So Ellen, who you've met, CEO, Suzanne Maurice, director of administration, Pat Underwood, Director of Communications, Karen Titonel, Director of Finance, Havelin Anand, Director of Government Affairs and Policy, Jose Sagan, Director of Knowledge Translation Programs, Alison Douglas, Director of Standards, Justine Jecker, Director of Professional Practice, Jenna Rose, Professional Development Coordinator, and Megan Piltzmaker, Executive Assistant. Megan, can you confirm that we have reached quorum, please? Yes, we have. Excellent. And we can get underway. Yes, you did. All right. All documents for the AGM were posted in both official languages on the CAOT webpage. Today's meeting will be conducted primarily in English with voting procedures and motions scripted uh, in both languages on the slides. During the question period, we will be able to answer questions from our members in French or English. Tous les documents de l'Assemblée générale annuelle ont été affichés dans les deux langues officielles sur la page web de la CE. La rencontre d'aujourd'hui se déroulera principalement en anglais. Toutefois, la procédure de vote et toutes les motions seront inscrites dans les deux langues. Pendant la période de questions, je pourrai répondre aux questions de nos membres en français. I'd like to explain the voting procedures for today's meeting. You will note the chat box on the screen. We will use this box to communicate. 
Please note that only CAOP members can vote. All others, including associates, have observed status. When I call for a mover and seconder, please type the word move and your name, unless you've signed on with your full name. I will do my best to recognize the first member who does so as the mover and the second member as the seconder. Once a motion has a mover and a seconder, I will fall, call for questions and comments. If you have a question, please type your first and last name and your question or comment into the chat box. The mover has the right to have their comment addressed first, then the seconder, followed by any further comments. As chair, I will have the discretion uh, for the length of the discussion. When I call the vote, if you are in favor of the motion, do nothing. If you choose to oppose or abstain the motion, please indicate your vote by typing the word oppose or abstain in the chat box. If you are joining from a site where more than one member is present, please type in the total number of eligible voting members that are opposed or have abstained into the chat box. So just to be clear, if I don't see any text in the chat box to oppose or abstain, I will assume that the voting members are in favor of the motion. If you abstain or oppose a motion and you would like your name recorded into the minutes, please include the word record in the chat along with your abstain or oppose vote as well as your full name. This year we are voting on ordinary resolutions only. So in accordance with our COT bylaws, a resolution will pass with a majority of 50% plus one. So for this meeting, we have 63, at least 63 attendees at the last count, uh, which means we will require 32 uh, votes for the resolution to pass. Now Len will repeat instructions for our French speaking members. Thank you and apologies again, we're having a bit of issue uh, with my computer of all days today. Um, so Megan and Jenna are trying in the background to be as helpful as they can with the slide. Um, J'aimerais vous expliquer certaines directives relatives aux procédures de vote. Vous verrez l'icône chat sur votre écran. Nous nous servirons de cette fonction pour communiquer. Veuillez prendre note que seuls les membres de la CE peuvent voter. Tous les autres participants, dont les associés, ont un statut d'observateur. Lorsque la présidente demandera qu'une personne propose une motion et qu'une autre l'appuie, veuillez inscrire le mot « propose » dans la fenêtre de conversation et votre nom, sauf si vous êtes déjà inscrit avec votre nom au complet. Et la présidente reconnaîtra le premier membre qui le fera comme celui qui propose la motion et le deuxième membre comme celui qui appuie la motion. Une fois que la motion aura été proposée et secondée, la présidente demandera si les membres ont des commentaires ou des questions. Les personnes ayant proposé la motion ont le droit de que l'on réponde à sa question ou commentaire en premier, suivi de la personne ayant secondé la motion et ainsi de suite jusqu'à ce qu'on l'on ait répondu à toutes les questions et commentaires dans l'ordre où ils ont été reçus. Notre présidente a un pouvoir discrétionnaire quant à la durée de la discussion. Lorsqu'elle demande les votes, les personnes en faveur de la motion n'ont pas à inscrire leur vote. Donc, si vous êtes en faveur de la motion, ne faites rien. Nous demandons seulement aux personnes qui s'opposent à la motion ou qui s'abstiennent d'inscrire le mot « oppose » ou « abstention ». Si d'autres personnes qui sont avec vous dans la pièce s'opposent ou s'abstiennent, Veuillez inscrire le nombre total de s'oppose ou abstention. Donc, pour être bien clair, si nous ne voyons pas les mots s'oppose ou abstention apparaître dans la fenêtre de conversation pour indiquer que le membre s'oppose ou s'abstient, nous assumerons que le membre votant est en faveur de la motion. Si un ou plusieurs membres s'abstiennent de voter et veulent qu'on inscrive leur nom dans le procès verbal, S'il vous plaît, veillez à leur inscrire votre nom au complet dans la fenêtre de conversation. Cette année, nous ne voterons que sur des ré résolutions ordinaires. En vertu de nos statuts, cela signifie qu'une résolution ne sera adoptée que si la motion obtient 50 % des votes et plus. Thank you, Alain. So may I have a mover and a seconder for the motion? that the revised agenda be approved. 
I'm just waiting to see if the slide, thank you. So Kelly Stewart, mover, seconder, Suzanne Lenvoy. Are there any questions? You see me moving back and forth with my eye line here. It's because I've got two screens going on. Okay, I'm having a look here. There is a note here from Philip. I, oh, thanks, Philip. Okay, so it's not for this particular motion. So I don't see any comments for this motion, so I will call the vote. All in favor, do nothing. Opposed or abstentions, please type into the chat box. I don't see any notes in the chat box. So that motion has been carried. We'll go to the next motion. May I have a mover and seconder that the motion for this motion that the minutes of the annual general meeting held on Monday, March 23rd, 2020 be approved. A mover and a seconder, please. Melissa Green move and seconded by Christine Fleming. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments? Okay, seeing nothing, I'm not seeing any typing in the chat box. So that motion has been carried. Thank you. All right. I hope you had a chance to review our annual report from the last fiscal year. It is on the website in the About COT section and was posted in the AGM materials. I'd like to call a motion to receive the published report for the year ending September 30, 2020. Then because we are already in March, I'm going to take a few minutes, the next few minutes to provide you with highlights from our first half of this membership year from October 20 until now. May I have a mover and seconder for the motion that the president and CEO's report be received. Moved by Catherine Backman, seconded by Karen ribeiro Gruel. Thank you. Are there any questions about the printed report? I don't see any questions being typed in yet. So I will call the question. All those in favor, um, please uh, do nothing. And op oppositions or abstentions, please note in the chat box. Let me look here. Motion is carried, thank you. Ellen, I'm just noting a question here. We'll keep track of that and we'll come to that at the end of the uh, presentation today. Okay, so during Occupational Therapy Month, we launched our public education campaign with the aim of increasing the public's understanding of how OTs can help. The campaign includes a bilingual website, oteveryday.ca, that's the homepage image on the left side of the slide and the tagline occupational therapy making the everyday possible, which our friends at SOT have shared so that the profession can use the same line nationally. For the French site, we are using l'ergotherapie rendre mon quotidien possible. The initial site content is focused on aging in place and mental health stories and will expand over time. The call to action is to find an OT linked to CAOT's national directory. Three public facing social media accounts are also promoting the site. A series of three ads are being tested on digital and print platforms to assess audience impact. 
the ad on the right of the slide will be seen in the April-May issue of Zoomer magazine, which is sent to 1.5 million Canadians in our target market. The Economic Evidence Clearinghouse, or EEC project, is advancing with the mandate to develop a comprehensive, shareable database of information that contains synthesized literature regarding the economic evidence of occupational therapy interventions. The EEC Advisory Committee will be providing a project update at the COT Virtual 2021 sponsored session at conference. Co-chairs Gail Restall and Mary Egan and a 17-person advisory panel are creating the next edition of Occupational Therapy's core text, Enabling Occupation, with a still-to-be-determined title. The team led an important discussion regarding the new occupational model proposed in the book and have also met with ACATUP and CORECOM to share information. 11 of 14 chapters have been submitted and reviewed. The next step is to conduct the pan-Canadian consultation to ensure that the French version reflects the Canadian culture and language. The new text will launch in 2022. Work continues towards an early summer launch of Remodeler, Remodeler Savi. That's Melanie Lavasseur's translation of Lifestyle Redesign, a University of Southern California publication that integrates the concepts from USC's landmark Well Elderly Studies. The French Canadian text will give practical guidance on how preventative occupational therapy greatly enhances the health and quality of life of independent living older adults and illustrates how to incorporate the program into practice. Following the videotape killing of George Floyd last year and the release of our statement, no silence in the face of inequality and injustice, CAOT and our partners committed to an honest and inward look at the structures and attitudes we currently have in place. Through a series of meetings and communications, we have been asking ourselves what more can we do to bring about a fair society, free of racism, oppression, and hatred. The answer is that there's a lot of work and change ahead. Working groups have been formed that include representation from OT community members who identify with rights advocacy, CAOT staff, ACOTEP, ACOTRO, and COTF representatives. Collectively, we are working together to affect change from within. The working groups are collaborating on a joint equity and justice position statement for the profession to embrace, one that not only replaces our 2014 statement on diversity, but challenges core tenets of occupational therapy. Emerging equity and justice ideas are, are, are also intersecting and influencing several key initiatives. The Action Plan for the Truth and Reconciliation Task Force, the profession's new competencies being set out in the CORECOM One Competency Document Project, and the theory and practice being articulated in the next edition of Enabling Occupation. At CAOT's conference this year, a volunteer group of thought leaders is designing the opening session, inviting us all to have a stark look at white supremacy. It's the start of a reckoning that we will want to follow going forward. Truth and Reconciliation Task Force co-chairs Angie Phoenix and Karina Valvara presented the CAOT TRC Task Force Action Plan, Truth and Reconciliation as a precursor to occupational justice to the CAOT Board of Directors in November, 2020. The action plan identified short and longer term goals and activities in six areas, relationships, mental models, practices and policies, power dynamics, work plan and governance structure. A second presentation to the OT Canada leadership group took place mid December. Legislative changes are expected in 2021 to modernize the framework for regulated health professions in British Columbia. Recommendation, recommendations made by COTBC during initial consultations were included in the latest steering committee report. Proposed framework changes includes reducing the number of regulatory colleges from 20 to six and establishing both a new oversight body and a new complaints process. CAOTBC consultation with ICBC and the government of BC continues in the lead up to legislative changes May 1st. This is when the next iteration of ICBC's benefit plan 
the enhanced care model moves to the implementation phase. The regulations that support the framework for enhanced care were announced in an early March press release with the aim to ensure that those injured in car crashes get the care they need, when they need it, and for as long as they need it. CAOT has participated in more than 50 engagement and consultation ses sessions since the government outlined its initial suite of enhanced slide, um, enhanced accident benefits a year ago. CAOT's home modification work is advancing. We sponsored and hosted a booth at the Livable Environment Conference in October, promoting occupational therapy solutions for aging in place to more than 400 delegates. CAOT representative Marnie Courage presented a session called Home, Modi Home Modifications, What Could Go Wrong? about the multidisciplinary collaborative approach to home modification projects. She was also a panel participant in putting a healthcare design lens on planning, designing and building resilient project, residential projects. More recently, Ms. Courage was nominated and named as part of a new group run by the Canadian Standards Association a technical subcommittee on accessible homes. We are pleased and proud of the strong contributions being made by occupational therapist leaders across Canada to advance roles for OTs and priority areas of practice. As a member and co-chair of the Organizations for Health Action or HEAL, collaborative work among healthcare leaders has intensified during the pandemic. HEAL released it's beyond COVID-19 ill's recommendation for a healthier nation just this past November, providing the federal government with recommendation for future pandemic readiness with a focus on issues related to seniors and mental health. AOT's contribution to sec sector level initiative has have had uh, great outcomes in the recent months. CAOT endorsed the report from the National Institute on Aging and the Canadian Red Cross title, Closing the Gaps, Advancing Emergency Preparedness, Response and Recovery for Older Adult. The report made recommendation across six health domains that underscored the need for evidence, inform, uniform, and collaborative emergency management intervention, including OT interventions, to meet the needs of all older adults, regardless of their circumstances and living condition. A second out outcome is the World Health Organization's Rehabilitation Competency Framework that launched in February. This framework is a key tool that aligns the a rehabilitation workforce with population needs through the application of a competency-based approaches. An introductory webinar was shared in February. CAOT was pleased to have our Director of Standards, Alison Douglas, contribute as a project delegate. CAOT submitted a federal government pre-budget briefing as part of the Let's Talk Budget 2021 process, sharing recommendations for the inclusion of occupational therapists in health-related strategies to jumpstart the country's economic recovery and repair the damage done by the pandemic. OT strategies for mental health, aging in place, returning to work, and working from home were articulated. CAOT's Director of Knowledge Trans Translation, Jose Seguin, is now a member of the Mental Health and Substance Use Workforce Advisory Committee. She will be contributing to a study funded by CIHR called Assessing the Capacity of Mental Health and Substance Use workforce to respond to COVID-19, led by Dr. Ivy Lynn Bourgo and Dr. Mary Bart Ram from the Mental Health Commission of Canada. As the name suggests, the study will address the effect of COVID-19 pandemic on the capacity on the capacity of the mental health and substance use workforce. We encourage you to participate in a related survey that will be coming this April. The report from the Professional Issue Forum 
held at the CAOT Virtuel 2020 was released in the fall titled Services for People on the Autism Spectrum Disorder Across Canada, Initial Step to Mapping a Shared Voice. The PIF objective is to begin co-creating a share occupational therapy vision targeting OTs, people with autism, other health professions, and policymakers. As well, CAOT participated in the Canadian Autism Leadership Summit 2020, led by the Canadian Autism Spectrum Disorder Alliance, or CASDA. A policy brief is now in development with CASDA, asking the government to fund research that considers the structural barriers of access to service providers, including occupational therapists. CAOT Virtual 2021, being held from May 16th to May 19th, will provide over 100 hours of leading edge practical session to a large online gathering of the occupational therapy community from across Canada. I hope that you plan to attend. You don't want to miss the opening session on white supremacy. Two professional issue forum will be held one on sexuality from an occupational perspective, then, now, and tomorrow, and the other on palliative and end-of-life care, making space for uncomfortable conversation. The closing speaker is Neil Kiwistep, a proud member of the Fishing Lake First Nations, who will speak about Indigenous health in the midst of a global pandemic in his address, things are different now, but what is the same? Please a reminder that the early bird deadline is approaching very fast and is on March 31st. CAOT is pleased to announce that a November conference is going to take place to do a deep dive into aging in place topics and consideration. Relevant involved stakeholders from multiple disciplines will join OTs as delegate and presenters. Topics will include accessibility, home modification, fall prevention, primary care, mental health, and more. The aim is to hold a client co-construction conference to include the client's voice and leadership as equal partners in this learning experience. A call for paper for this innovative two-day virtual gathering will be announced early summer. A new communication platform for CAOT Practice Network was built in the first part of the year. Using the Teams platform, which many of us have grown familiar uh, with during COVID-19. CAOT is now providing real-time training to network co-chairs to help transition them to using all of Teams feature so that they can schedule and manage meetings, share files, and more. For the more than 25 CAOT practice networks now available to members, this plus platform represents a significant, significant step forward in the ease and effectiveness of participating with like-minded colleagues in an online environment. We are on track to have all of our network transition to the Teams platform by June 30th of this year. The 2020 Muriel Driver Memorial Lecture, traditionally delivered to delegates at CAOT's annual conference, was recorded and shared openly as a featured event during Occupational Therapy Month in October 2020. Deborah Liberté Redmond gave listeners an opportunity to reflect on the current and future state of the profession in her address, Mobilizing Occupation for Social Transformation, Radical Resistance, Disruption, and Reconfiguration. 449 candidates sat for the National Occupational Therapy Certification Examination, or NACHI, in January, where two significant changes were enacted. 
First, the exam was written online instead of by paper and pencil. Second, given pandemic circumstances, the exam was conducted using using live remote proctoring instead of in-person testing centers. Both changes were successful and sincere, sincere thanks needs to be passed along to the members of our key committees, the exam oversight committee, the certification examination committee, the item writers, our ACATA and ACATRO partners and CAOT staff for the long committed hours that were poured into making this transition happen. We are truly grateful for everyone's hard work. Before the next scheduled exam in July, the core exam documents are being revised and refreshed to better identify CAOT as a provider of the NACHI in partnership with the exam committees. On the screen, you'll see the new exam logo that we are rolling out. The accreditation program for OTs, along with partners ACATRO and ACATUP, recently undertook a project to examine its overall structure and will consider further steps based on the consultant's report. Additionally, the CAOT board is underway on a year long standards review project as we continue involvement with OTA and PTA accreditation. The work of the core comm steering committee has now concluded and the implementation phase is next. All involved organizations are being asked to determine how to adopt the profession's new competencies Extensive stakeholder consultations led to the writing of the draft competencies and a national survey inviting comment on them is in the field right now. I hope all of you have seen it and will respond if you haven't had an opportunity to yet. There have been over 62,000 viewings of Rachel Thibault's webinar series, Pathways to Resilience, Strategies in a World in Upheaval, since it was first shared by CAOT last year. I'm sure many of you have benefited from viewing this powerful five-part series, both as an occupational therapist and also as an individual. The large and appreciative international response has resulted in continued open access to the webinars. We are very pleased that CAOT Quebec Regional Director France Verville is working with Rochelle Thibault to record a next series of webinars in both English and French as soon as scheduling is possible. CAOT introduced a new membership category in the fall, new practitioners. There are OTs in, our, in their first four years after graduation, a cohort we would like to involve more and serve better as an association. To make membership possible for this group, low membership rates have been put into place, as you can see on the screen. Here are a couple of member engagement updates. CAOT student associates at 14 schools across Canada received iHeartOT face masks and information flyers in the fall from their CAOT student reps. COT was also proud to sponsor the Got Spirit Challenge during OT month with first prize going to the University of Toronto. Member Appreciation Day was held on February 24th, thanking CAOT members with prizes and celebration throughout the day and the CAOT Membership Satisfaction Survey was in the field in late February, providing an opportunity for input and feedback from members regarding CAOT programs and benefits. This concludes our midterm update as part of the President's and CEO's report. We will have time for questions at the end of the meeting and have noted them um, throughout, from the chat box throughout this segment. May I have now onto the treasurer's report. Uh, may I, I'm calling for a mover and a seconder for the motion that the treasurer's report be received. Moved by Yuda Henricks. Just waiting for a seconder. Seconded by, I think that's Jeff, Jeff Boniface. Thank you both. I am pleased to invite Marky Collingwood, CAOT's Treasurer and Chair of Finance, Audit and Risk Committee to present the Treasurer's Report. Hello, bonjour. I will focus my report on high key level messages um, from CAOT's audit financial statements for the year ended September 30th, 2020, as well as the financial summary that is published in the CAOT annual report 
that have been posted to the CAOT website. CAOT's accounts have been independently examined by the auditing firm Andrews and & Company. I am pleased to report that Andrews and Company outlined in the letter of findings regarding the audit that there are no significant risks identified, no matters arising, they did not identify any control deficiencies. Overall, CAOT is in a strong financial situation. Cash end of year 2020 is 2.2 million. End of year 2019 was 1.5 million. The net assets saw a growth of $821,000 from 2019 to 2020. You will note on your screen is our revenue statement. Our revenues decreased slightly to $4,065 million, down from $4.8 million. There were increases in exam membership and insurance revenue, but were offset by significant decreases in conference revenue due to the cancellation of the in-person conference and some minor decreases in all other revenues. We'll turn now to our operating expenses. Our operating expenses in 2020 were $425,000 less than 2019 which resulted in an operating excess of revenues over expenses of $537,000 in the current year. Diligent management of expenses during the past year was really key to this. In addition, during the year, CAOT applied and qualified for a number of months of the Canada Emergency Wage Subsidy, CEWS. The subsidy covered a percentage of employee wages for the qualifying months preventing job loss and easing CAOT into the 2020-2021 operational year. The total subsidy of 285,000 is included in the 2019-2020 year statement of operations and increase the total excess of revenues over expenses to $821,000. It is recognized that this is a large increase in excess of revenues over expenses. In 2019, the excess was $254,000. As a not-for-profit, the application to the, and for the CEWS was a fiscally proven decision for CAOT. It's not currently possible to accurately quantify or estimate the subsequent impact COVID-19 may have on further association activities. CAOT will continue to monitor this very closely. CAOT is well positioned financially for 2021 and our COVID-19 recovery has begun. We remain in a positive financial position at the end of 2019 and 2020 with the surplus of revenues over expenses and a positive gain in net assets. Thank you. Are there any questions on CAOT's financial status? Margie, I'll read out the uh, first question. Can you please explain a little more about the revenue and expenses from the accreditation and exam? Does the exam bring in funds for CAOT? Still there. Um, the, the exam brings in funds, but it's, a, it's a, a considered a cost neutral. Uh, the, the funds that are brought in from the exam uh, cover the cost of the exam. Does that help explain? Thank you, Margie. Are there any other questions? Can't see if anyone else is typing. I'll just hang on. I'm just going to hang tight here for another few seconds. 
There is a certification examination um, reserve fund. So some of the funds that are brought in from the certification examination are also put into this reserve fund. So what you may be asking is it may look like there's um, excess surplus from the, uh, um, the examination. However, that's put into the fund to allow for further growth and development of the uh, certification examination. Thanks, Margie. There's one more question I'll read out. Are there any plans to invest the surplus from last year, specifically investing in membership support, special, special projects, et cetera? So, yeah, um, at our 2020, November 2020 board meeting, um, some of the um, excess funds will go into the next budget year. Um, so some of those funds were appropriated to our um, internally restricted funds to a, a $300,000. We are anticipating a $360,000 um, um, deficit for the, for the year 2020, 2021. So we have allocated some of our funds to that. And then we have a remaining balance of just over $150,000 um, that we um, have not allocated. Um, some, there could be some possible shortfalls as we've noted that we are really unforeseen in this kind of unprecedented year. So we, we did not allocate those um, funds. Thank you, Margie. I don't see any other questions having come in during that time. So I will, oh, excuse me, there's one more. Uh, Margie, did you say that we are anticipating a deficit? At this point in time, yeah, the 2020, 2021 year is, is it has an anticipated um, budget deficit of 360,000. Thank you. Okay, thanks again, Margie. A reminder to everyone that we do have a motion on the floor and that is that the treasurer's report be received. We will now call the vote. All those in favor, please do nothing. Any op oppositions or abstentions, please note in the chat box. Okay, that motion is carried. Thank you, we'll go to the next slide. Our next motion is that the auditor's report for 2019-2020 be approved. May I call for a mover and seconder, please? Moved by, sorry, I'm just going to read. So it's Rosemary and Kelly Stewart. Thank you. Uh, Margie, anything to uh, add for the auditor's report? No, I have nothing um, further, no further comments other than what was addressed in my report. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments? Just looking in the chat box here. I don't see anything here. I'll just give that another few seconds. Okay. I will now call the vote. All those in favor, again, uh, don't need to type anything. Any opposition or abstentions, please type into the chat box. That motion is carried. Thank you. Okay, on to our next motion. May I have a mover and seconder to appoint Andrews and Company as the auditors for the fiscal year 2020-2021. Cynthia, I can't see Cynthia's last name, but if somebody else who's monitoring, so Cynthia move and Cynthia Johnson, thank you. And Natalie uh, Villette, uh, seconder, thank you. Are there any questions about the appointment of the auditors for the next fiscal year? Not seeing anything in the chat box, I will call the vote. Again, uh, all those in favor, please uh, don't type anything in the chat box and any oppositions or abstentions, uh, please note into the chat box. Okay. 
Not seeing anything there, so this motion is carried. All right, the next, on to the next motion. May I have a mover and seconder that the, for this motion that the Board of Directors be authorized to establish the remuneration for the auditors for the year 2021? Mover and seconder, please. Uh, Utah, thank you. That's moving and a seconder, please. Christine, thank you. It's Christine Fleming. Are there any questions or comments related to this motion? Okay, not seeing anything coming in. So we'll call the vote. All those in favor and oppositions, abstentions, please note in the chat box. Okay, seeing nothing there. This motion is carried. Thank you, Margie. Now we'll move on to the Secretary's report, and I'd like to invite Lisa Diamond Burchak, Secretary and Chair of the Governance Committee, to report on the election results. Hello. In keeping with COT's bylaws, members are asked each year to put forward the names of worthy colleagues to fill vacant board positions. The COT board is comprised of directors from each province and one from the territories, a WFOT director, an external director, a president, vice chair, treasurer, and secretary. A call for nominations is extended in early October with the December 1st deadline. A constituent election is held if there is more than one eligible candidate. This year, all of the positions were filled by acclamation. Successful candidates are put forward in a motion to elect at this, the annual general meeting. So today we are electing positions for external director, treasurer, Saskatchewan director, and incoming CAOT president. I'll pass things back to President Giovanna Boniface to take you through the motions to elect the new directors to the board. Thanks, Lisa. We have several motions to move through to elect the successful candidates, and I appreciate, appreciate your patience at what may seem a bit repetitive as we go through this. Because this confirms the electoral process and we want time for discussion later, I will go a little bit quickly. Feel free to say slow down or type, sorry, type that into the chat box if I am going too fast. So first, I will need a mover and seconder for the first motion that Deborah Beach Ducharme be appointed external director October 1st, 2021 for a three year term of office. Moved by Christine Fleming, seconded Karen Ribeiro. Are there any questions? I'll call the vote. All those in favor, please do nothing. And oppositions and abstentions, please type in the chat box. That motion is carried. Next motion, that Margaret Collingwood be reappointed treasurer October 1st, 2021 for a two year term of office. A mover and seconder, so moved by Juliet Cooper and seconded by Karen Judry. Are there any questions? I'll call the vote. All those in favor, again, don't need to do anything. Opposition and abstentions, please type into the chat box. That motion is carried. Next. That Suzanne Lundboy be reappointed Saskatchewan Board Director October 1, 2021 for a three-year term of office. Moved by Chris McWilliams and seconded by Christine Fleming. Are there any questions? We'll call the vote. All those in favor, please do nothing. Oppositions and abstentions, please type in the chat box. That motion is carried. May we have a mover and seconder that Philip Went be elected as the president of the board October 1, 2022 for a two year term of office. Looking at the chat here. So a motion, so moved by Alicia Carey, 
and seconded, I don't see a seconder. Oh, Susan, sorry, the names are disappearing here. I think it was Susan, if somebody, oh, Susan, Suzanne um, Adamson, thank you very much for typing your full name in. We'll call the, are there any questions? All those in favor? Please do nothing and any opposition abstentions type in the chat box. And that motion is carried. So congratulations to everyone. To you, Ellen. Thank you for helping us through that series of motion. I'm very proud to uh, present your board of director for 2021-2022. I want to take a moment to say thank you for those joining and those continuing with the board and acknowledging outgoing members who have completed or will be completing their terms, even though the current term of office ends on September 30th, 2021. So Dirk, Dirk Silversides, external director, thank you, Dirk and Andrew Freeman, who resigned from his WFOT director position as of January 29, 2021, given his election to the WFOT board as program coordinator and professional development. Thank you. It's been a pleasure working with both of you and you will be missed. And following the call for nomination, we are welcoming Paulette Guitar as interim WFOT director on the CAOT board. Thank you, Alain. And again, congratulations to everyone. Um, we'll now hear from Christine Fleming, vice chair of the board and chair of the awards committee. Hi. So announcing award recipients is one of the happier tasks I have. The call for nominations is now open year round and has a deadline December 1st. The awards committee evaluates submissions and submits recommendations for approval by the board in February. Award recipients are typically offered, honored, pardon me, at the award ceremony at the CAOT conference. But with the cancellation of our in-person conference this year, we are looking to an alternative way of publicly celebrating all award recipients in the fall. We are pleased to announce the award winners during this. The 2021 recipients are Muriel Driver Award, Barry Trentum. Dr. Trentum is recognized for his outstanding contributions to the profession of occupational therapy through his practice, research, and education. He has dedicated his career to addressing justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion. In the words of his nominators, Barry embodies many of the attributes that are valued and needed for our profession to evolve and grow stronger. Helen P. Leviscont, Rochelle Thébault. De les débuts de la pandémie et sur invitation de la CEU Québec, Rochelle a donné son temps comme bénévole pour produire à la série de webinaires Le chemin de la résilience. Cette série de cinq webinaires a permis aux ergothérapeutes de voir accès à des ressources enrichissantes dans un moment de difficulté pour tout. Rochelle a tenu que son temps et ce partage de connaissances soit de bénévolat pour sa communauté de ergothérapeutes. Cette série est le cumul d'une carrière académique exceptionnelle. Leadership in Occupational Therapy, Jenny Hardy. Jenny is recognized for her exceptional contributions to mental health and addictions through her work as acting director at the Center for Addiction and Mental Health, CAMH. Jenny leads many programs and projects that aim to increase access to high quality mental health and addiction services. Fellowship, Donna Collins. Donna is recognized for her consistent and outstanding contributions to the profession of occupational therapy through her leadership, both locally, provincially and nationally for 46 years. She is recognized for her leadership 
organization and collaborative approach in her roles with many communities, community organizations, as well as the University of Manitoba and ACATA. An award of merit is, will be presented to Sharon Eady. Sharon is recognized for her significant contributions to the profession provincially and nationally through her work as executive director for the College of Occupational Therapists of Manitoba. She continues to build collaborative relationships with, within occupational therapy and across health professions that contribute to the ongoing development of quality occupational therapy. An award for innovative practice is being presented to Ben Mortensen. Ben has demonstrated exceptional leadership and innovation through his research with assistive, assistive technology or AT users and informal and formal caregivers. His research has important policy and practice implications regarding AT provision through home care and has informed a network of centers of excellent age well project that sought to identify and develop new technology to help informal caregivers. Life membership, Sandra Bressler. Sandra is recognized for her outstanding leadership in the field of occupational therapy in Canada and worldwide. She has made vast contributions to COT since 1990, holding many roles on the COT Board of Directors. She has served as a COT delegate to WFOT for nine years, making many important contributions, including serving in the role as the Program Coordinator Practice Development. The Golden Quill Award. This year, we are pleased to announce two winners, Pierre-Luc Tucot, Annie Carrière, and Melanie Lavassieu for their article, Community-Based Participatory Research Remodeling Occupational Therapy to Foster Older Adults Social Participation, and Leanne Leclerc, Heidi Lochner, and Cynthia Yamamoto for their article, An Occupational Therapy Community Development Practice Process. Both CJOT published articles were exceptional contributions to occupational therapy. The committee really wanted to nominate both articles and would like to celebrate the methodological rigor of the Turcotte et al. article and the audacity of the Leclerc et al. article. We're also pleased to announce this year our CAOT Outstanding BC Ther Occupational Therapist of the Year Award, Carmen Grandon. Carmen is recognized for her extensive work with four BC First Nations. Her involvement has been impactful and far reaching in that her work has supported the foundation for program development in First Nations communities across British Columbia. The CAOT North Outstanding Occupational Therapist of the Year Award goes to Rochelle Schooley. Rochelle is recognized for the amazing innovative work she is doing to address mental health challenges in the Beaufort Delta Northwest Territories. Rochelle approaches her practice with the teaching of cultural humility and is committed to consistently recognizing personal and systemic biases and humbly acknowledging herself as a learner when it comes to understanding another's experience. The COT Quebec Outstanding Occupational Therapist of the Year Award goes to Caroline Storr. Caroline has been contributing to occupational therapy at a local, provincial, and national and international level for more than 40 years. During her career as an occupational therapist, she has worked clinically in pediatrics, as an educator, as a clinical coordinator of fieldwork, and as a collaborator on research products, projects. Pardon me. The 2021 Citation Awards are awarded to, from MSOT, Chief Derek Henderson, Audrey Henderson, and Sharon Richard from the Sag Sagin First Nation. From OSOT, we have Handicare Limited, based out of Toronto. COT Quebec, Penelope McQuaid from Montreal. NBAOT recognizes the plastic surgery department at St. John Regional Hospital. And from Newfoundland, from NLAOT, the gathering place in St. John's. Every year, it is our pleasure to acknowledge the Fieldwork Educator Award recipients. From the University of British Columbia, we have Gary Sito, University of Alberta, Samantha Lowe, University of Manitoba, Cindy Yamamoto, McMaster University is Monique Lizon, University of Toronto, Mira Del Rosario, U 
Queen's University, Amanda Hall, University of Ottawa, Valerie Metcalf, Université de Montréal, Belle Ménard, Université Laval, Jessica O'Day, McGill University, Muriel Boulot, Boulot, pardon me, Université de Sherbrooke, Joanny Colette, Université de Québec à Trois-Rivières, Annie-Claude Brunel, and Dalhousie University, Christopher McWilliam. Gio, you're muted. Thank you, Christine. <laughs> Thanks for that. Um, congratulations to all award recipients. Let's have a virtual round of applause for everyone. I can see there's lots of congratulations in the chat box. Thank you, everyone. We'll now move to our next agenda item, which is titled Other Business. So this is your opportunity to ask questions, offer feedback to the board of directors, CEO and senior staff at CAOT. I am aware that we are, um, um, we're slightly over time. We did start a little bit late. So we do understand if you need to um, leave uh, our scheduled time, but please um, feel free to type questions in the chat box. And I, I know we've been collecting some here as we went. So I'm wondering, Jenna, are you able to post them back into the chat box? And then I will uh, read uh, the questions in order here. So what I'll do is I'll read the three out to you that we had and then anyone else that comes up after um, we can address that after. The first one was, can you talk about the selling of the CAGT building? Yes, actually, I'm going to pass this over to um, Ellen. Would you like to address this one? Yes, absolutely. And Margie, feel free to add as well. Um, a discussion about uh, looking at the sale of the CAOT building began with the board in November 2019. Looking at our financials and the amount of uh, cash that we could use to support members' um, special project. project. So uh, a cost analysis was undertaken in terms of owning the, the building versus renting the building. And at the same time, CAOT, uh, I implemented a work at home policy. So we started to work at home two days a week. Uh, at, uh, staff started to work at home two days a week. So we could see that the um, footprint, square footage was not fully maximized. And also another thing, we lost our tenants in November, 2019. And with all of that, then uh, we made the decision that the best financial scenario for CAOT was to lease. So sell the building and lease uh, in order to be able to uh, save some money and to be able to reinvest in membership services. Then we listed the, the building uh, and then the pandemic hit us um, as all of us around the world and so the building has been empty since uh, for over a year now we are still in Ottawa in the red zone so we believe we'll continue to work from home until the fall the of the sale of the building was official as of last week um, and so currently we're looking at uh, renting options. There's a, a lot of good deals because there's a black cloud over Ottawa right now, lots of space for rent. So uh, landlords are, are really uh, making good offers for tenants. So that's what we'll be looking at, working with our staff in terms of, um, of our next space. If I hope that answers you, your question, I think it's Margaret who had asked the question. Thanks, Helen. The next question was, will enabling occupation three contain background information on the evolution of the text? As a profession, we have a knack for forgetting our history and the significant uh, hallmarks of professional development. Helen, I'm going to pass this one over to you as well. Um, 
I believe Sharon Bripnell, who was a past press president or president of CAOT in 78, 79, has asked that, that question. Yes. Thank you. Um, I don't have the answer, and I maybe call upon uh, Jose Seguin. Jose, would you be aware if there will be some uh, evolution of the text as part of developing the, uh, the next book? Thank you for the question. We have uh, discussed on the best way to present, and it's it hasn't been decided, it hasn't been confirmed, but it is con being considered into the new text on on if it's going to be presented or not. Thank you, Alain and Jose. Thank you. Other, yeah, oh, there's sorry, another. Go ahead, Jenna. Sorry, Gio, there was another question. The next question was, was the WFOT delegate also chosen by acclamation as there were a few different um, people who had put their names in for that? Okay, so I'll start with this one and then uh, Lisa and Ellen, I'll invite you to add anything that I might miss on this one. So uh, section 7.14 of the COT bylaws, which is a section titled filling vacancies, stipulates that vacancies on the board may be filled by the board for the remainder of the term. So the chair of the governance uh, committee reached out to the director inquiring about um, interest to fill this interim role. First off, we did that within our current directors. So um, all COT directors supported the call for nominations as there wasn't capacity to do that with our current complement of um, board. On Jan 20, January 29 of this year, a call for nominations to fill the interim WFOT director position was sent by email to all COT members with a deadline of submission for February 12, 2021. So uh, the next step was then nominations were received, eligibility was confirmed, and then as per our governance manual process for interim appointments to the board, a special meeting of our board was held on March 15th to appoint the interim WFOT director. So I'm not sure, is there anything else, um, Lisa or Len, that you wanted to add? And I'm hoping, uh, I think it was Tal that had asked the question. Um, does that answer uh, your question about our process? I'm just monitoring the chat. Please feel free, Lisa and Len, to add anything. I don't see anything so I'm going in the chat box so I am going to make the assumption that that answered um oh here's a so follow up so the person who is now the interim was on the board so as uh, announced earlier in the uh, presentation today so the um the board appointed Paulette Guitard in the inter as the interim uh for the WFOT director and I think your question is, was the person on the board? And yes, uh, that is one of the criteria for a board uh, director position at COT. And so Paulette Guitard, as you may uh, recall, was the past president of CAOT. And I'm not sure if your question, Natal, is related to there. Um, we did first do a call to and discuss the option of filling the board, the position from within the current board. And the decision was made that we just, nobody really had the capacity to take that on. The board didn't have the capacity given all of the challenges of our current environment. And so that's why we decided to do a call out from outside of the current board. Thanks, Lisa. So I hope that provides the, um, oh, I'm not sure. So I just see a comment from Sharon. I'm not sure, Sharon, um, what this is in reference to. Um, I'm also just keeping an eye on time and I'm, I, we do wanna honor any, all of our questions that are coming uh, today. If we're not, if we have not provided all the answers, we will definitely uh, do that and uh, perhaps Alain let's know we can follow up with Sharon I think it's still maybe it's still re related to enabling and so we can follow up uh, as well with Jose around um, that edition the next edition okay so thanks everyone for questions uh, again feel free to reach out to us um, you can reach out in between if you've got other uh, questions or comments 
So it is time for us to draw our meeting to a close. Uh, we really do appreciate that you have stayed an extra uh, 20 minutes um, and um, apologize again for our technical uh, delay at the start. The next annual general meeting will take place in March of 2022 and we'll review COT performance during the 2020-2021 membership year. We do hope that you will join us then. As all business